Hey, what's up? This is Zach with Root and Branch Group. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to do actionable SEO reporting for free. We're going to be focusing on Google Search Console. So this is the third video of a three part series on on page SEO. The first video was all about the equation for SEO, what it means to say authority plus relevancy equals SEO. We also talked about domain authority and SEO potential. There's a link in the description if you want to watch that one. The second video was focusing on keywords and keyword research, how to build topic clusters and use that in content planning. In this video, it's number three about SEO reporting. So let's get into it talking about Search Console. So what is Search Console? This is what Google says. Google Search Console, the tools and reports from Search Console help you to measure your site's search results and performance, fix issues, and make your site shine in Google search results. So what we're talking about today, it's not going to be so much on the fixing issues, but all about the measuring your site's search traffic and performance and using that to build a complete picture of your SEO. Critically, Search Console can't tell us anything about what people do once they land on the site. For that, you will need something like Google Analytics to measure your conversions, but a lot of the SEO reporting insights, again, totally fine to only rely on Search Console. So we're going to look at five ways to measure with Search Console and make it actionable. What five will we talk about? Well, number one, how to see the overall trend in Google organic search performance. Number two, how to improve ranks for keywords that are outside of the top several spots. So not in maybe spots one and two, but still on the first page. How can you identify what those high opportunity keywords are so you can work on them and get them to move up and drive more traffic? Number three, how can you get keyword ideas for content expansion? So which keywords or search queries are you ranking for, but just kind of by accident, you haven't intentionally targeted them. Those might be great keywords to intentionally target and maybe not just rank like 13, 14, 15, but actually put together a piece of content for them and get way up high on the first page. Number four, find your best and worst pages in terms of overall traffic and also traffic trends. Which ones are gaining in traffic versus last year? Which ones are decreasing in traffic? A lot of the times the ones that are decreasing in traffic, those are the ones that you're going to want to prioritize for content updates to try to get your rankings and your traffic back up. And number five, if you are a business with one or more brick and mortar locations, you should absolutely have a Google business profile, formerly called Google My Business. You can see your traffic from your Google business profile. You can see that performance in Search Console if you append UTM parameters to your website link in your Google business profile. So we'll look at what that looks like in this video. All right, number one. See the overall trend in Google organic search performance for your website. One of the first things you'll see when you load up Search Console is an overall picture of what search performance looks like. So you'll see for web search results, what the trend looks like at a, whatever time period you select. So we're looking at here, web search results for the last 16 months. We can see there's 62,800 clicks. And there's also all these other things to the right. So you can see total impression count, average click-through rate, average position, all of those things you can toggle on and off in Search Console. So let's pull this up now for the Root and Branch site. All right, here we are in Search Console. That's search.google.com slash search console. If you haven't set this up, I'll put a link in the description. It's super free, super quick to verify your site with Search Console and get access to all of this awesome data. Under performance here, we're going to hit search results. And now we can see that graph that we were just looking at a screenshot of before. Any of these things that you click on or off will just turn that piece of data on or off. So let's change and look at the last 16 months worth of data on the root and branch site, just to get a top level picture of what's happening with organic search. We can see we went from, you know, between 14 to, you know, 70 clicks a day, um, the lower the dips there on weekends to, you know, right now, a low of 50 and a high of a few hundred a day. Now it does seem like there's recently been a small decrease. Overall, we would say the total shape of this curve is a positive one. But certainly we'd love to see this little dip here start to increase back up 
and to the right. So just high level, what is the overall trend in organic traffic to the site? A very important and foundational part of your overall SEO reporting. Now, you can hit this button here where it says search type web. And if you have any images that you're ranking for, which you should if you've used alt text properly on your site. Now, for the root and branch site, there's not much we're ranking for in terms of driving traffic from Google image search. But, you know, we do have 682 clicks here. So that's good, um, you know, more than nothing. And we also have some video search. So if we change this search type from web to image to video, we'll also be able to see what's going on there. And we can see for these things as well, we can turn on impressions, average click-through rate, and average position. Now the average position and click-through rate not gonna be super helpful when it's all rolled up at the total level, but when you start to drill down into your, your top pages and your top ranking search queries, that's when those things can be super powerful. Number two, use Search Console to improve ranks for keywords that are close to, but outside of those top couple spots. Why does this matter? Well, we're gonna look at two graphs here. This is showing that an average click-through rate of 1.8% for keywords that are ranking in the eighth spot in mobile position. So you, you get 100 impressions, you're getting just under two clicks on average, 1.8 clicks. If that keyword ranking in position eight right there, if you were able to move that up to position two, the click-through rate jumps all the way to 13.94. So essentially 14. You increase your click volume by a factor of more than seven just by moving up from spot eight to spot two. And that doesn't happen by accident. What it's a product of is intentionally identifying keywords that are ranking between, you know, between spots three and spots eight or nine, identifying the best ones that are the highest opportunity and putting together uh, some content efforts to try to rank more highly for those and significantly jump your organic traffic. So back in Search Console here, we're gonna toggle on this average position. We're gonna be looking at web searches here. Let's just say, you know, a more recent time frame. Let's just look at the last 28 days. And we're gonna hit this filter right here. And we are going to filter this based on position. So we'll filter smaller than 8.1. So that's gonna get us everything that's ranking in position eight or better, we'll hit done. And then we're gonna toggle this by position here. And we'll turn on our average click-through rate and our impressions just so we can see. We can see now some of those high opportunity keywords. So Yoast sitemap link, 53 impressions, one click. We can see that click-through rate is just about what that graph would lead us to expect, 1.9 in position eight. That might be something that we could work on. Non-branded search, wow. Position eight, 255 impressions, zero clicks. So big impression count in a limited time frame, no clicks, could be high opportunity. You can expand this rows per page. Let's keep looking down here. for other things that might be great opportunities for us. Hmm, another one, non-branded keywords. Wow, so it's similar to branded keywords, non-brand search. Let's look at this one specifically, because this could really be a focus for us. Let's click on that specific query, and we'll toggle from queries here to pages. We can see, okay, so that ranking performance for this one query is on this specific blog page, brand versus non-brand, organic search. So now we can add this to a priority list of pages for content updates. This specific page with a little bit of work, if we can get that up, few ranking spots, we're gonna start driving way more traffic.
Number three, we can get ideas for new sections of blogs. For example, on the root and branch site, there's a page, the Google Analytics for FAQ. So we can get ideas for new sections to add to FAQ pages based on what specific questions people are asking that our site is already ranking for. So for example, for the GA4 page, we can see people are looking for, when does Google Analytics 4 start? It's July 1st, 2023, by the way. So if you're not already working with GA4, you should totally be doing that because at that point, Universal Analytics goes away. Or what version of Google Analytics do I have? Some people don't know. How can you quickly diagnose which version of Google Analytics you're running? So there's a really great way that you can use Google Search Console to figure out what specific questions you are ranking for. Let me show you how to do that. So the way to see these questions in Search Console is to apply a search query filter and to use a regular expression. We're gonna do that in a second, but here it is on the screen right now. We're gonna copy and paste that and move on over now to Search Console. All right, here we are back in Search Console. We're on the performance report, search results, and up here we're going to hit this new button and add a new query filter. If we hit this drop down, we can put in a custom query filter to match a regular expression. I'm just going to paste that in. This is actually also in the description of the video in case you want to copy and paste it yourself. We're going to use this to get all of the questions that are being asked on the site. The who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and the how. And that will take our 19,600 clicks down to 368. And we can see not only all of those different search queries, how much click volume is behind each one, how many impressions, and also we can turn on average position again and start to see things for, hey, where is content? Where are good questions being asked where we don't have specific content that is answering it? That might be something like, what is the latest version of Google Analytics, right? People are asking that. We're ranking number five. The answer to that is GA4. We can add that as a section of the blog in our Google Analytics 4 FAQ and most likely rank more highly than that 5.3 spot. And for any of these search queries, if we click into them, we'll then be able to isolate to the specific page where it's ranking because that is likely the page that we'd want to work on to continue to boost up our search position. The fourth way we can use Search Console in our SEO reporting. We can find our top and bottom pages in terms of total click volume, least click volume, and pages that are increasing and decreasing in traffic. Personally, I find the pages that are losing traffic to be the most interesting because those are the actionable pages. Those are the pages where we can say, look, we're losing out on some traffic that we used to have. Is this an opportunity to isolate that page, do some content work, and then get that traffic back. The way we do that is when we select our date range, we can hit um, not just the last three months or last 16 months, but we can do a comparison and we can hit to compare the last three months year over year and then just hit this apply button and that will then give us some data that one, we can use to just grab screenshots of, put it in our SEO reporting deck for you know our client, our manager, whatever the case may be, and get actionable insights like, in this case here, we can see some of the specific pages on the root and branch site that are dropping the most in click volume. We've just sorted this by the click delta between the last three months, 2022 and 2021. So this first one here we see is a button click tracking setup blog that's down more than 50% in click volume. So that could be an opportunity to refresh the page, get that ranking back up and get those clicks back up. The way we're going to do that again, we'll just hit this date range filter and instead of this filter button, we'll go over here to compare and we can do this option to compare the last three months year over year. For this, I would typically turn off average position and total impressions because that's not going to give you too much at the when it's rolled up at the total page level. And then we can sort by click difference and look at the page level instead of the query level. And now we've got our opportunities of pages that we're gonna to want to work on right at the top.
Now, the last and final of the five ways that we can use Google Search Console for SEO reporting to get actionable insights is to measure how your Google business profile is performing. So I'm going to sh show a screenshot here of a business that's not root and branch. And what I'm highlighting here, when we look in the pages report within Search Console, are three different Google business profiles, three different Google business listings. And we can see that they're Google business profile listings because of these UTM parameters that have been added. So this is going to show us those business listings that show up in that local map pack when people look for things like digital marketing near me, coffee near me, dermatologist near me, whatever your business actually might be. We can see is that are you getting more or less from that on a year over year basis? Is it growing? What specific search terms are we ranking for? If you don't know how to set up your Google business profile with UTM parameters, there's going to be some links in the description for you to do that. It's very quick. You just need to understand what UTMs are and how to use them. So those links will be in the description, but then you can use that same query filter functionality to use uh, near me filters. So instead of applying a query filter where we're putting in a regular expression, you can filter those 14,200 total clicks for this one website down to near me just by using a query filter that, let's check it out, just use this queries containing option. Queries containing near me, apply that, and then now we're isolating and looking at only those near me filters. So if you're doing local SEO work, this is a great way to do a bulk of your SEO reporting right here in the Search Console tool. We know that we can isolate not just the last three months or last 28 days, but we can also compare year over year performance by changing our date range. So look what we've done here. We've just changed that date from the last three months to a comparison. And now we can see that those 751 clicks in the last three months, that's essentially doubled over that same period in 2020. And all of a sudden we start to have a real story. We can tell our client near me searches are up 101.3%. We know that for this particular business, those near me searches convert at a rate of about 10% turning into new customers. So those 378 new potential prospects in terms of 378 additional clicks, that's about 38 new customers. So not too bad. So thanks for watching this video about SEO reporting with Google Search Console and using it to get actionable insights. I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, feel free to stick around. There's typically a video once a week about SEO or Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Google Ads. Just to wrap up, these are some guiding questions to think about when you're doing your SEO reporting with Search Console. What is the overall trend of Google organic traffic to the site? For web, for video search, for image search, going up, down, flat, are things generally on the right track? Basically, that's the story you want to tell. Or are there issues you need to investigate? In the past three months compared to the prior year, which pages are decreasing in organic search performance? Those are going to be the ones that you want to emphasize to work on to try to get them back up. How about in the last 28 days compared to the preceding 28, which two to three blogs that you've written are increasing the most in clicks? Not only are they good for bragging, but those could be candidates for use in other marketing channels, maybe social media, maybe email marketing. Clearly there's something there that's interesting to your audience. Get that content in front of more eyeballs. And what can you learn from what's working with those two that you might be able to apply to future content? Now, in order to measure on site conversions from SEO, like form fills or actual purchases, if you're an e-commerce site, we do need another tool. That tool is Google Analytics. This video is already way longer than I thought, so there's going to be another one about that. But there's tons of videos about Google Analytics on the YouTube channel here, how to set up conversion tracking, how to do all of those types of measurement things. So if you're interested, check them out. I'll also put some links to some of the top videos in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Have fun out there.